Reacting to the German breakthrough at Sedan, the French ordered the crack 3rd Armoured Division to attack the Sedan bridgehead on the morning of the 14th. However, it failed to reach its start lines until late that afternoon, and also found itself without artillery or infantry support. The local commander, 2nd Army's General Hunziker, called off the attack and ordered the division's tanks to be dispersed amongst his infantry units, thus dismantling the one Allied force which stood a chance of repelling the panzers. Hunziger also decided to pull back his left flank to guard against a German thrust into eastern France. This merely widened the Sedan breach from 5 miles to 15. Further up the river Meuse, German panzers had also crossed at Montarmé and Dinan and severely battered the units of General Korab's 9th Army. The Dinan crossing had been made by 7th Panzer under the command of a 48-year-old Major General Erwin Rommel. By the evening of the 15th, Guderian's panzers had broken through the defences on the Ardennes Canal and the roads to the west lay open. Yet that very evening, Kleist, worried that Guderian's forces were overextended, ordered him to halt and to confine his troops to the bridgehead already gained. Guderian argued forcefully against the order and received permission to continue the advance for another 24 hours in order to widen the bridgehead. With his customary boldness, Guderian made the most of this permission, advancing 50 miles as far as the river was. To his right, Rommel also advanced some 50 miles, capturing 10,000 prisoners and 100 tanks for the loss of only 35 killed and 59 wounded. At nightfall on the 16th, Guderian was again ordered to halt. Neither Hitler nor his high command could quite believe how easily the French had been overcome. They were still fearful of a strong counter-attack against the vulnerable left flank, and Hitler insisted on Guderian waiting until an infantry corps could come up and form a flank shield. As Guderian's panzers were slicing through French defences to the south, in the north, the Germans were also gaining the upper hand. On May the 12th and 13th, the first major tank battle of the war took place. At Merdo, the French First Army's two light mechanised divisions came into contact with powerful elements of the German 3rd and 4th Panzer Divisions, ably supported by Stuka dive bombers. On the first day, the French tanks did well, proving that on a one-to-one -one basis they could match the much vaunted Panzers. The Samoas, in particular, could stand more than one hit by all but the heaviest German tank cannon. However, as the battle progressed, the Panzer's superior tactics enabled them to outmaneuver the French repeatedly, and at nightfall on the 13th, the French tanks withdrew. That same evening, the tanks of the 9th Panzer Division reached the outskirts of Rotterdam, and the Dutch position, despite heroic resistance, became hopeless. The next day, following ferocious Luftwaffe bombing raids on Rotterdam, Holland capitulated.
The German breakthrough on the Meuse reduced Gamelin's entire strategy to tatters. Realizing the extent of the catastrophe, French Premier Paul Renault phoned Winston Churchill early on the 15th to say, we have lost the battle. Churchill insisted that the advancing panzers would have to stop soon to resupply, at which stage they could be attacked and cut off. The sheer speed of the German advance had thrown Gamelin and his commanders completely off balance. In trying to devise effective counterstrokes, they kept thinking in terms of infantry pace rather than panzer pace, and so were consistently too slow in responding to the changing situation. Time and again, they would designate a halt line where the German advance could be stemmed, only to find that the panzers had already passed that line. Early on the 15th, General Giraud was switched from the 7th Army to take over the shattered remnants of the 9th Army. Late that night, Gamelin, realizing the breach at Sedan was irreparable, ordered the whole Allied front in Belgium to be withdrawn to the line of the River Scheldt. Poor liaison meant that the BEF and the Belgians did not receive the order until the following day. On May the 16th, Paul Renault took steps to replace Gamelin and summoned General Maxime Weygand from Syria to assume command. Weygand was 73 years old and had been recalled from retirement just the previous year. He didn't reach France until May the 19th, causing a further delay in Allied attempts to devise effective countermeasures. In any case, Weygand's ideas were just as outdated as Gamelin's, and so his accession to the command saw no significant change in Allied tactics. Following the French collapse at Sedan, the British War Cabinet decided that they would send no more RAF fighters across the Channel. On May the 17th, the Royal Navy were informally asked to draw up plans for the possible evacuation of the British Expeditionary Force from France. In the south, on May the 17th, a counter-attack was launched against the Panzer Corridor by Colonel de Gaulle's 4th Armoured Brigade, but this was easily repulsed. On May the 18th, Guderian reached Peron, while to the north, Rommel occupied Cambrai. That same night, General Giraud arrived at his new headquarters to find that the 41st Panzer Corps had got there before him. Early the following morning, he was captured by a German tank patrol. Later that day, de Gaulle's 4th Armoured Brigade mounted another attack against Guderian's flank. But the panzers, well supported by Stukas, again beat him off. To the north, on May the 17th, Louvain and Brussels were occupied by the German 6th Army. As the Allied troops retreated westwards through Belgium, they began to threaten the right flank of the German advance. In the early hours of May the 20th, Rommel occupied the strategic heights near Arras. He was about to be attacked by the British Expeditionary Force. The offensive, launched on May the 21st, was supposed to be made by two British and eight French divisions. However, the French were still not ready at the allotted time, and so the British had to attack on their own. With only three infantry battalions and 74 tanks. Nevertheless, they took Rommel's forward units completely by surprise and succeeded in driving them back 10.